Well, happy Saturday morning to everybody out there. We got Randy Alexander back because we got some developments happening over there in South Carolina. And I got to tell you, uh, this is just a sign of things to come. This is the beginning of the beginning of this repeating throughout the United States. We're talking about bank runs, guys. And this is a very unique story. But before we go any further, please do me a favor. If you had any kind of debt forgiveness, mortgage, car, student loan, whatever, and you want to be on my show, very simple, QFS1776 at gmail.com. And we'll definitely put you on a show because I'm proving it in spades that, you know, Jasar and Asara is absolutely 100 trillion percent very real. And it's going to start to get amplified here shortly, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, don't forget, hit the boss button, go over on Rumble, and follow us on Rumble. QFS1776.com is the holy grail of what's to come. You got to get yourself immersed because you don't really have a choice we're burning down the old system, okay? And um, the T-shirts, you got to get yourself decorated. People need to know what is just R to R, and then you send them over to where? QFS1776.com. Unify TV, okay? Stop giving your money to the monsters. Take your money, redirect your money, and then magical things start to happen. These monsters start to go out of business, okay? That's exactly what you want to do. Unify TV, get yourself an account. You can pay for the year or monthly, whatever, we're going to paint a picture of what the world is going to be, and it's going to be glorious, okay, on earth as it is in heaven, okay? And it's going to, we're going to create heaven right here on earth. If you understand the prayer, I'm sure you do. Uh, gold and silver at the cheapest prices right down below, promo code Mel Carmine, all right? Don't even waste your time looking for cheaper prices. They don't really exist. I mean, you might get somebody that comes real close, but that's about it. Better Business Bureau, triple A rating, $8 billion in sales in the last 33 years. Come on. Uh, also, our Telegram groups right down below. You want to know what's going on? You want somebody to take you by the hand and walk you through the process? We got thousands, tens of thousands of people waiting for you. Patriots, real cool people. And I thank every single one of you guys in the room for doing God's work, because that's exactly what this is. Uh, also, if you're looking to buy $10,000 worth of XRP, and you don't want to go through the BS or all the hassle, or a million dollars or $10 million worth, I'm the guy you come see, okay? I'm connected with a bunch of brokers all over the world, and we have over 350 satisfied customers who have gone back three, four, five, six times. They say, Mel, absolutely a class act operation. Now, we have a very unique story. This gentleman, Randy Alexander, who's going to become one of my good friends, you're probably going to see a lot of Randy, okay? Uh, he went to the bank yesterday, and there was a lot of commotion going on. People can't get their money out, all that, that kind of stuff. So he gets out of the bank and he starts to what? He starts to speed and gets pulled over by the cop. I'm going <laughs> to let him tell you the story because it's very funny. Uh, Randy, welcome, brother. Uh, this is this is going to be amazing. I can't wait to hear the full story. Now we got it on video. It's going to be official. Thank you, brother. It not, it's nice to see you, Mel. Um, I've enjoyed meeting you and being on your show. Um, and I really I like your energy, enthusiasm, and your patriotism. And um, so, and I appreciate everything you do. And by gosh, I just love your chair. I love your chair. Thank you. Anyway, long story short, yesterday, yeah, see, I seem to run into the most interesting things. And I guess that's what God let me live for through my cancer was I was going to experience some things just so I could, you know, tell people about what was going on. I get a nice little check in the mail. It was unexpected. It was for... It was just for like six hundred dollars, mm. and I go down to the bank and I bank at Truist, um, formerly BB and T, but Truist. Um, I don't like banks, but I love the people there. They're they're kind, sweet people. I take them snacks and I keep with them, and they're always good to me. And but I've always heard that they're they've said something's going on. There's some changes coming. There's just things happening, and they're not being told because they're in the trenches. They're not the the people upstairs by any means but anyway they were having glitches here and there you know over the last few months and you know hard to get money and this and that and everything but anyway i go into the bank yesterday and there were about 30 people in there and it's first of the month and there's a lot of people and i quite frankly i think a lot of people that don't have a lot of money that had their, got their checks a lot of elderly people and it really just broke my heart what i saw and went through because what was happening is that um, 
they're going in and then i noticed that there was just a lot of consternation a lot of dialogue at you know with the people whispering the tellers kind of whispering hey what do you want to do we can't give you much money and then it got to the point where initially they were able to give out no more than five hundred dollars that's what they're able to do. So the, a lot of people are coming to cash their check to get cash and they went, couldn't do it. And then it started getting, I was in line and started getting worse and got up there and found out they could not pull up any information. Your debit card did not work. They could not uh, use my debit card and say, here it is, put money in the bank or give me money. Um, they couldn't find any information. You had to tell them the, the account number and everything. And then there was very, they couldn't do anything. They said their system was down. Then it went totally down. Now this was right about 9.30 in the morning. The bank opens at nine. It's a Friday mail, it's a Friday. And then they, I was shocked because they said, the whole system in our entire company is down, down. And I said, what in the heck? You know, the, the Truist is a huge, huge bank. And they just recently merged, <clears throat> excuse me, with some bank. And yeah, it was that's because they needed to get together because these banks are, you know, are having a hard time. Well, long story short, so I'm there and they're turning people away left and right. And the people are getting really rowdy, really upset, very, very vocal. And there was a man, he was about six foot five, big guy, yelling, take your money out of the bank, get it out now. Well, what did they do? One of the managers called the police. The police showed up. Spartanburg City Police came in and was looking around. And he was not like going in and going to go bust heads. He was like, what is going on? You know, what, what do I need to do? And the, of course, him walking in and he's out front with his light on, you know, in front of the bank. And of course, that's going to draw a lot of people. And then there's more and more people coming in just by droves. And they're saying, we can't give you any money. We can't get you any money, can't get you any money. And we don't have any control. It's totally down for the entire system. Well, I'm thinking, oh my God, there's something just not right. So I was not happy. I was trying to, quite frankly, pay my car payment. Um, and I was trying to uh, get that score, put some money in the bank and get that squared away. I don't spend, put a lot of money in the bank. I don't believe it is where you should put your money at all. It's utility. Get it in, get it out. Because if you think like a gentleman that was, I was talking to in line, he said, and I was there for 30 minutes. So, you know, I was seeing what was going on. It wasn't in and out. Uh -uh. And, and then I, he was talking to me. He was an elderly gentleman. And he said, you know, I've been hearing things. And I said, like for the bank, he goes, yeah, but everything, he says, things are just not right. He says, they're not good. And the banks keep trying to talk me into CDs, you know, and I've had them, but they're not paying anything. And I go, yeah, what's Mel, what is the inflation rate right now in our country? It's off the, it's off the Richter scale. What you hear on the news, it's a complete lie. It's a, it's a fabricated number. There's an old you, saying, figures don't lie, but liars figure. Okay. Oh. That's very true. Well, you're exactly right. And then I was telling him, I says, they're offering 3%. And I go, you are losing so much money. I says, you need to get it out of the bank and buy gold and silver. And, you know, and I referenced your show. I really, really did. Because I said, D do you look at, you know, alternative media? Do you look at podcasts? And he goes, not really. I says, that's where you need to start looking. And I says, and learning because you're not being told the truth. And he goes, yes, I'm getting to be believe that. And then I had another gentleman and this lady, she was going out, she was crying. And I, Mel, I, she was probably 80. She, let, she didn't have any money and she had a check and she couldn't, she goes, what am I going to do? I can't get any gas or groceries. And she was squalling. I felt so bad. If I'd had any cash on me, I would have gave it to her. Right. Um, and that was what was bothered me because I came home after this rendition of all this and I said, oh, to heck with this. I came home and I was really upset. What I saw, what I heard, police being there and saying, well, it's here. It's not going to happen. It is happening. Right, Everything exactly. is changing. So now things. you leave the bank, right? And you're speeding. Tell that story. I'm speeding down the road, main down Pine Street, <laughs> south down on 
Spartanburg Main Street. I am hauling butt. I am mad. And I'm trying to get a hold of my wife. And my wife hadn't been feeling real good. And uh, I thought she was on the phone with her girlfriend chit-chatting and was ignoring my call. And I'm going down the road, get home. And anyway, long story short, oh, what do I see? Blue lights. Boom, boom, boom. And I go, crap. I know who that's for. That's me. Because I was going like 15 <laughs> miles over the speed limit. And the police officer gets out. And he comes up before he can say anything. And I said, I'm guilty. I did it. I'm speeding. I'm mad. He said, so no, we, we're fine. And he starts laughing. And he says, what's going on, sir? And I says, well, I was at the bank and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, you were at Truist. And I go, yeah, he says, I heard the call. They called over there, you know, over the radio for somebody to go over there. And he goes, what was going on? And I said, they don't have any money. Their systems are completely down. And he told me, he says, sir, let me tell you what. He says, you're exactly right in what we're talking about. And he said that he pulled his money out of the banks completely three months earlier. And the bank he had been banking with was good old Bank of America, who closed my little account because I was buying cryptocurrency. And we talked about that. And he said, people don't, they don't understand this, but don't put your money in the bank. That's not the place to put it. Guys, get a home safe, put it somewhere, you know, and 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 do that. So we got talking and he came back and he said, let me run your license. And I said, I know, because I got two brothers that retired law enforcement. So I know how the drill is. And I've been stopped before. Right, and right. so, and I thought, <clears throat> okay. So, and then I thought, well, hell, we're all going to make my day. If the deep states pulled some strings and trying to get Randy to shut up and have an arrest warrant for him or something. Right. <laughs> You know, and I was like, oh, God, I don't care. He comes back and he goes, I'm not giving you a ticket. It is so nice talking to you. I'm so glad what you're doing. Do me a favor. Slow down. Get home safe to your wife. You know, and I gave him my card and I told him about I did podcast. He goes, oh, I want to listen to your podcast. And I told him about our show that we had just done. Oh, I'm going to look him up. I'm going to look him up. So the people in the bank, as I was going out, there were people saying they're done with the banks. They're done with the banks. They don't trust them. It's like the politics. Now, today, lo and behold, I get something so fascinating. It is divine intervention. I look at my email, and I have an email, and it's from the Washington Examiner. Now, I sent you a screen. Yeah, let me, let me share my screen with that real quick. This couldn't have been more timely because there was something that this came up that the I had no idea. Banks right. could seize your accounts. Have you heard about the bail-in? Okay. Yeah. This is when they can take your deposits and bail themselves out. Okay, Dodd Frank. Good old Chris Dodd from, from Connecticut, you know, got this going, him and Barty Frank. And they decided to help the banks and everything. So during the Obama administration, you know, who's to be surprised about that? Anyway, they are allowing to take your deposits and they can take it and manipulate it and make it look like um, they're going to be able to use that as resources. If there are any financial predicaments, they can pad the books, quite frankly, and bail themselves out. Yeah, and, and this is in the Washington Examiner. Washington Examiner, you know, this is- Fresh this, off the press, the press, right? Just came out right now? I just got it just a little bit ago. I just got a little bit ago. Okay. And, and I will tell you, um, you look at this and I'm thinking, okay, now, Mel, <clears throat> you're a smart guy. Um, I'm kind of smart, but you're real smart. Okay, I here's know the about that. I know yesterday that the bank that came back online over five hours later. Yeah. Five hours on a Friday for the mm -hmm. whole bank, the whole bank. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, what are they, what could they be doing? There's just not a glitch like that. I'm sorry. I just cannot comprehend that that is the truth. Mm. But when I got this and I said, wait a minute, what if they're kind of finagling some things to, you know, to prop themselves up? Because and then I also heard something just again yesterday that if one of the big banks, they're afraid if one of the big banks fail, that it will be a complete domino effect. 
and that the, the, the banks, they'll just start going and going and going and going. And I think we're seeing that this is the beginning of it that it is happening. You know, of course, it's behind the scenes. We're not going to know anything. Of course, we're mm-hmm. not the only people. We're going to learn things about people like you and I who are out there talking about it, making sense of this. And my whole point is that I'm not trying to be um, going against truest. I'm not. I am, or any particular bank at all. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is to the people, I said, be smart. Think about what you're doing. Utilize the bank as a utility to pay your bill. Like our technology is, we pay our bills with with online, mm. you know. And so, um, you know, the days of going to get a money order and send it in the mail, you know, no, no. So, but but you've got to look. And I told my wife, I says we're not keeping any more than ten dollars in that account, any account, and we're putting any cash that we have or valuables is going to be in our safe. So um, it was, I do believe that people from the good side of this, the good news is that people are truly waking up. The normies are waking up, not the people that are like we're talking to our audience because they are, they understand this. What it is, is that this is information that I believe that people could easily share with others um, and their family and their friends, people, and just get the word out. Because let me tell you what, when you had a one, that the word got around really quick that there was problems getting money at the bank and people were flying in that door. By the time I left, there was a line from the counter for five tellers in the bank. This is a big bank. And it was almost out the door. There were probably 40 people in line. And they were coming in in droves. I had a hard time even getting out of the parking spot. Wow. So that's crazy. That, that that's happening. And, 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 you know, and I love my, my town. I love Spartanburg. I love the people here. And yeah. um, I don't want to see them being hurt. I don't want them to lose what they've worked hard for. You know, they have, and it could be gone in an instant. And, you know, years ago, I was afraid. And I sold a lot of stock off and I could have, I had a lot of Costco stock. Well, in my opinion, it was a lot. But anyway, I had a good bit of Costco stock and I sold it off during the Obama era because I had heard from my friends in D.C. that they were going to seize people's 401ks. And they, I believe, were in the process and it may still happen or the, the stock market is going to do so bad that you're not going to have much left anyway. But I sold a lot because I was not, I had no confidence in the system and people are losing their confidence in all of our systems, all of our government and our financial institution. And why? It is because they, through their actions and inactions and what they've done that hurt the people, not protect the people that they deserve the the repercussions, the banks and, and those. And so I wanted to share this story with you. Uh, I, with your following and your, your expertise and background, you could get and communicate this very well. That look, going back to what you're saying, you got to be smart, get gold, get in silver. Do, if you're doing some crypto, they're pushing that crypto down now, big time, in my opinion, you know, so the bankers don't, cause they're, they're trying to yeah. come out with alternate currency, you know, the, the, uh, the central bank digital currency. Yeah, we've been talking about this ad nauseum for a long, long time. We've been beating this drum for a while. And finally, people are starting to get it. It's, you know, you might say a little too late. You know, it's never too late. You know, but we got to, it's going to be a little harder to get the train back on the tracks because we've let it, you know, we've neglected it for such such a long time. Uh, I could could tell you uh, emphatically that I've been telling people, get your money out of the bank for months and months and months, because especially where we're going through this digital asset, uh, you know, manipulation, stock market manipulation, gold and silver manipulation, you see the writing on a wall. If the banksters could have gotten their, you know, you know, their, their piece of the pie, so to speak, this Mm -hmm. Turkey would have been out of the oven a long time ago. Okay. But because they're, they know that they're done, that we're about to become our own banks. We're about to, you know, we're going to about to get our power back, as Trump says, we're going to even give the power back to you to people. That's why you have the struggle. You know what I mean? And uh, it is what it is. But I, I could tell you that 
uh, these are the probably most interesting times. And I think, you know, it's been dress rehearsal leading up to this point. And uh, it was all practice runs. And I think we're, we might be in the last of it right now with this particular uh, case with the Supreme Court, like mm-hmm. I, uh, without mentioning too much information, because, you know, YouTube uh, doesn't like us talking about that kind of stuff. So we have to respect their wishes until we take over. Uh, but for the time being, you know, we got to get this video out far and wide because folks, I'm going to tell you right now, South Carolina is a testing ground. It's called test marketing to see how the people are going to react. Next thing you know, this is going to happen in Los Angeles. This is going to happen in Alabama and New York and New Jersey and Chicago. It's going to happen everywhere. And if you don't think it's coming to a city or a town near you, you'd be making a big mistake. Get your money out of the bank. Get your digital assets off the exchange. By the way, the links are down below. All right. Make sure you buy the uh, digital uh, the uh, digital wallets directly from the manufacturers, which where we lead you to. Okay. Yeah, we make about four dollars and twenty nine cents, whatever it is, for each uh, wallet we sell. But you're going to pay the same price anyway. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes we get a promo code. We'll give it to you. You make you know you get a savings, what have you. But right now. We live in very dangerous times. Do not be driving. You You don't drive your car down the road without having a you know, spare tire in the trunk. Why would you drive your financial future without having your digital assets sitting on your hardware wallet? That's just crazy. You're looking you're looking to get punished, you know, and um, it is what it is. So man, you're you're invested also in some digital assets, I'm sure. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I am. Not a whole lot. I didn't know a lot about it. And but I know that. Okay, when they say, you know, there's certain people that say do this, I do the opposite. <laughs> and, okay, you know, and so, uh, and and that, and what they're trying to do right now is to to triple cryptocurrency. They've kept gold down for how many years? You know, calling it a, a relic. You know, it's right, right. But then yeah. the banks are buying gold like crazy. Yeah. And I don't need this is something that hit me, Mel, and I think it's kind of humorous is that, you know, used to hear all all the time, this bank got robbed, that bank got robbed. I mean, over. You don't hear that much anymore because you don't know why? Because the banks don't have any damn gun money. Exactly. They don't have any, they they literally have no currency in the banks. And these people at the bank have told me they don't carry a lot of currency. And they were having a hard time getting it from the Federal Reserve a couple months ago. Yeah. Well, they look at you funny when you want to make a pretty large, sizable withdrawal. You know, you have to, know you have to you order it in advance. You got to, you know, meet meet them at the bank at a certain, you know, three, four days later. They got to yeah. call the Federal Reserve. They got to ask for permission. All this kind of stuff. It's crazy, man. Yeah. It really, really is nuts. This is yeah. truly, in my opinion, this is truly the Wild West. Yeah. Now, when um, you were talking to this police officer that pulled you over, you had said yesterday that once you explained who I was, he said, oh, I know that guy. Yes. <laughs> Supposedly, he knows who I am. That's yes. hysterical. As I said, Mel, the blue chair guy. Oh, I know who he is. Yes, <laughs> I know who he is. <laughs> That's the, funny. The best thing he ever did is get that blue chair, that cr- that throne. And, and I told him, I says, yeah. Mel's quite a character. I like him. And I said, I'm yeah. going to work on a crown for him, you know, for, you know, for, you know, keep doing that. It's but, so funny because my brother called me one day. He said, man, he goes, he goes, I got to hand it to you because you, and this is all a stroke of like, you know, being guided by the one upstairs. You know, I have yeah. no, I'm not a genius. I'm just a regular guy. I put on my pants and I eat my cornflakes the same way everybody does. And there's nothing really special about what I do. Anybody could do what I do, actually. It's a fact. You know, you do this 500 times, you go go on camera, mess it up four, five, 600 times. Eventually, I promise you, you'll get it really good. You know, you'll figure out, you'll watch your own video, say, oh, shit, I sucked. I got to change this. <laughs> and you'll go watch video number 29. Shit, I sucked there, too. I got to change that. <laughs> Next thing you know, you make yeah. all the little carburetor adjustments. Out the other end comes out. Not the perfect product because we're never perfect. But as, as good as it gets, you know. Well, I think you've made great adjustments, and I'm working on mine. And there's millions to be made. I may yeah. not live long enough to get it right, but yeah. I'm going to just do it as I see it and call it as I see it. But you know, and again, thank you for what you're doing yeah. and, and sharing this because I'll tell you, um, you know, you've got to reach probably all around the world, and people yeah. need to be 
question everything. And yeah. that's what they don't want. And they can't tell you. And they're like, ooh, ah, uh, I, oh, uh, mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. So my brother you. called me. He's like, hey, he's a, you, he goes, you realize there's like a billion podcasters out there. Most of them are wannabes because you're the only guy that's got the crazy ass chair. He says, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a very, br I'm a marketer. Okay. Uh, now, very brilliant marketing decision. Yeah. Okay. Well, it wasn't intentional. It was just like it happened. You know, I told you the story about the reupholstery, yeah. my yeah. chair and all of that, and getting the run around for two months or almost two months. And then it led me to this chair and uh, they were going to reupholster my old chair also. And they said, yeah, we could do it. Then we can't do it. And then I ended up buying this chair. It's like, you know, somebody guided me there for a reason, yeah. because obviously we have a prophetic message. You know, I showed yeah. you the picture of God in the sky with the face, with the logo of the XRP. Oh. Is God I guiding me? To get the people, I'm I'm one of those guys, uh, Gary, uh, Gary, Randy. I, I, I'm the worst guy with names. If you if you meet me at a party oh, and you man. tell me your name, I'm going to ask your name like four more times. On the fifth time, I'll get it right. Uh, <laughs> Randy, uh, you know, it, it's like you know uh, what was I saying? I, I lost my train of thought. You're talking about prophet. You know, you like oh the, prophetic, the prophetic yeah, message, yeah, exactly. Prophetic. You know, exactly. the 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 God face that appears in the sky. Everybody saw that picture. That is a believer that. That's that, what it is. I and saw the that XRP logo with the separation yes. right in the middle. Yes, I did. And I, it was not like you got a strain. Oh, yeah, I think I make that. It was like, whoa. It yes. Right there. So and it is uh, like, whoa. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy, uh, I got to tell you, that I'm going to live or die on the battlefield, literally fighting for the little guy or gal. That's who I am. That's always who I've been. If I drive down the street and I see, you know, some uh, man trying to beat up a woman or a child, I'm going to no. stop and do something about it. Yep. You understand? I can't understand how these people just keep driving by. They see something like catastrophic like that happening or somebody beating up an old lady or something or somebody snatching. I'm going to do something about it. That's, you know, in this lifetime, you're either going to be a sheep or you're going to be a sheep dog. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure you know which category I fall under. Oh, I know. You're the wolf. You, you, you're going to get them. <laughs> so, and that's what yeah. I like about you. Yeah. And it's, and, it, and, it, and, and you're this, you're exactly right. I'm the same way. I can't run worth the crap. I couldn't, but I'll figure out someday. I'll have a good car. I can run their butts down. If they did something to somebody, somebody like, you know, a little lady or something, I'm, oh my gosh. Cause I look yeah. at it, it could be my mom. It could, you know, there's just, People in this world who are evil and cruel and you can't, they're not going to change. There are people in this world that will change. And, but this, this whole, uh, this whole notion that uh, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved. Mm -hmm. that, that is so wrong. It's just so wrong because it's going to come back. It's yeah, gonna come back hard it's definitely going to come back. No question it's about it. back to you. It's going to come back to you. No Good or bad, it's going to come back to you. Yeah. Well, brother, I had a great time. Thank you for the article that we shared with the audience. Uh, you know, we, people know the proof is out there. People, the way, even the normies are, you know, they're saying now uh, the, the final crescendo, the final step is they're going to get the, the gallon of gas to about $12 a gallon. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised it's not there yet, but after yeah. the elections, but it's getting ready to go wild. And then they're going to go, it's like my wife and I were talking, and I says, Carol, you're going to go into all these or Costco, and there ain't going to, there's going to be things you, they're not going to be there, you know, because we don't shop in freaking Walmart, period. Yeah. I mean, God, I don't about to die if I have to walk in that damn hole. But um, <clears throat> the we have to help one another. We have to get to know our neighbors. I live in a neighborhood. I've got to know the neighbors and be there to help one another because I'm telling you, if you don't, you're going to be isolated and it's going to be rough. Yeah. And we're going through some hard times and we're going to have very great times. You and I have talked about this. We're, I believe that we are going to have a tremendously good and I think 2023, we're going to see some really good big changes. Yeah. The RV is coming. The XRP is coming because they need it. Not because we want it. They need it a hundred million times more than we want it. And we want it pretty darn bad, which speaks <laughs> volumes. Okay. 
you know, it's all it's all about to change. We're going into a world that's going to be 180 degrees different than the old one. That's why, you know, I I, I sort of get annoyed uh, to some point with the original XRP Army because they talk about this, you know, Klaus Schwab and, you know, uh, uh, George Soros and the global reset, you know, and we're going to get rich and we don't care if the world's going to become a communist, you know, no. No. I'm not interested. Look, it was look the 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 analogy the 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 side by side comparison of what is going on today and what actually happened in Germany. And I was in the Air Force. I was stationed in Germany, and of mm -hmm. course, it was called West Germany at the time. And what the people told me is what happened to their family when the Nazis came in and took their sons, never saw them again. They didn't have any food. People, women were prostituting to make men's meat, to yeah. try to help without starving. These people were starving, Mel, and they don't care. And they and, and it's the central bankers. It's the bankers behind all this. Yeah, yeah. And they corrupt the governments. They've got it in there. The daggum Rothschilds, it's always been alleged, and there seems to be proof that the well, that um, there are connections with people that um, that would be very interesting looking back on history and what we're going through now. There's a lot of a lot of similarities. Yeah, you know, we should just get a bunch of broomsticks and put a white flag and and post it on every in front of every bank. In other words, we surrender, we give up, just as a spoof, <laughs> you know. Because I mean, I don't know why they're still fighting. I truly, I, I don't get the 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 argument, the 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 bravado, the the tenaciousness. I mean, you got nothing left. Give yeah. it up already. We've won a long time ago. If you're dealing in paper paper currency or paper checks, whatever, and you're depending upon getting paper back, you're, you're, that's not going to work anymore. Technology has already there where we do not need these banks. And I've had the bank people at the bank, several banks tell me, yeah. um, Hey, we don't have the employees anymore. I said, why not? Because we don't need them because people are doing so much online. So what does that tell you? Yeah, it's the writings on the wall. They did this in Cyprus years ago with the bank runs, and they're doing it now. And you know, that was just a they knew way in advance that they were going to do this. And that that was a that was the beginning of the beginning right there. That Cyprus bank run, that was, you know, all over mainstream media. You can't deny that that didn't happen. It did happen. Absolutely. And it's happening again. Lebanon. So, guys, if we can give you a word of advice, get your money off of the exchanges, your your uh, digital assets, and get your money out of the bank. Just keep enough there to keep you know pay your bills, whatever. Okay, uh, right now you just get it. You got to get one of these. You know what I mean? One of these things, or one of these. You know, stay home and put your money in a safe, or, or bury it in a backyard like Pablo Escobar did. You know, and uh, and that's it. You know, when the when the time comes, it comes. I mean, we're literally at the at the final crossroad and there's a lot of chatter out there there's a lot of uh audios that my friends keep sending me about this rv thing i hope mm -hmm. so because i own a couple of these bills the dinars the zims you know mm -hmm. i know i own a few mm -hmm. and uh thank you gila jed thank you so much she actually gifted it to me because i helped her out with some, the little fiasco problem that she had you know with uh with uh some of these scammers but uh we had we had we were, we were able we were a instrumental in getting her uh xrp bags replenished double the size from before and so she's okay with it she's like hey she actually even pr prays for her scammer she's such a great soul gila <laughs> jet she's like i pray for that guy you know it's like oh you pray i want to hit him with my car i want to run him over <laughs> and if he and if he's not dead i'm gonna i'm gonna put it in reverse and maybe you know go over him a few times so hey i got a better I got a better way. I thought about writing a book. <laughs> My wife says you need to write this. It was it was it's like a novel. It's just like a James Bond type thing. <laughs> I have my background in aviation. I'm going to modify a Gulf Stream so all the bad people are going to be on a flight and they think they're going off to some exotic vacation and the bottom's going to drop out and they're all going to the ocean. <laughs> Hi, what do you think? Is that a good idea? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it was funny. It reminds me, I was watching, I always liked to watch these weird shows when I used to watch TV a long, long time ago. And they, they had a sting operation. All these guys that were like, um, they skipped on their bail and they didn't show up to court and all of that. So the, yes. cops, the cops came up with this elaborate scheme that they won some big, big uh, vacation, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, and it was so attractive. They all showed up. And when they got there, as they as they're walking through the door, the FBI agents that. are grabbing them and handcuffing them, and I'm laughing my ass off. You know, <laughs> hysterical, hysterical. Because it's greed, it's greed, and these criminals are 
Oh, you stupid. Man. Yeah. I, I, I used to watch, I used to watch like um, America's Dumbest Criminals. Remember that one? Yes. Right? Where the, the guy breaks into a, a gas station that specializes in selling car batteries. He's got this big old station wagon and he packed it to the gills. The back was all the seats were all down. He got all batteries. The car was like, like this, you know, like the hood was like up, you know, because from, from the weight. He goes yeah. and he gets in his car to start his car. The battery's dead. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that's entertainment. That's, that's funny. Good. Because when you have a bad guy, bad <laughs> person, bad woman, whatever, whatever, they when they get caught, especially if it was something so stupid like that, that is, makes it just hilarious. Yeah. Because yeah. oh war, yeah. I'll tell you. There's so many uh, predators out there. One show that I used it. to be crazy about was Masterminds. Remember that one, Masterminds on I Core TV? So. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yes. masterminds. It was at, on at three o'clock. I was still talking uh, with Amber via the internet. I mean, we haven't met in, in person yet. Yeah. And uh, and I said, you got to wake me up five minutes to three every day because that's my favorite show. I can't miss it. And one day, one of my favorite stories, uh, that's maybe the reason why I like bank robbers so much is because they've been screwing us so much that I have a, an, a, an utter respect for bank robbers. You know, it's like, <laughs> hey, those guys are getting their money out back at least, you know, the money back. So, there's one guy in Israel, they used to call him the motorcycle bandit. I've told the story a few times on my on my podcast. It's a really neat story. This guy became like a folk hero. He was on the 7 o'clock news, the 5 o'clock news, the 6 o'clock news every day for years. They can't catch him. He would. He had a, 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 a big helmet with a black visor. He had his, uh, uh, you know, his gun. He walked walk inside the, the, the bank. He would never pull up his <laughs> visor. That's why the cameras can't pick up his facials, whatever. He would pop two, three shots in the ceiling. He said, uh -huh. everybody, everybody freeze. Give me the money. Boom. And get on his motorcycle and gone. And for years, they can't catch him. For years, right? The guy was good, good on a motorcycle too, boy. One day, he's sitting in his kitchen. And he's making himself. It's like, this is like three years later. And everybody would literally wake up. You know, they would wake up every day. They couldn't wait till the five, they six o'clock. Because they drama. want to see this guy. The folk hero. The guy that's robbing the bank. Nobody can catch in Israel. One day he's sitting at the kitchen counter with his fiance and he's making himself a sandwich. And all of a sudden the news flash comes on at five o'clock, six o'clock news. His girlfriend's watching and he, he goes to his girlfriend. He goes, honey, the motorcycle bandit, it's me. I'm the guy. <laughs> she said, get the hell out of here. She didn't believe it, did she? <laughs> she didn't believe it. She didn't want to believe it. Get the hell out of here. You're the motorcycle bandit. That's a lie. Did they ever catch the guy? <laughs> they did, finally. And they find out that the guy came for money. He did it for the challenge of it. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. It was an incredible yeah. story. That was my well, favorite. That was my well, favorite show. I, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm glad he shot in the air. He didn't hurt the people. Exactly. He no, he didn't hurt the people. He just wanted the he money. He wanted to get out. The challenge, the thrill. The gangsters. And I wonder if he came for money because his parents or somebody was in the yeah. bank industry. Yeah. Another you know, one of my favorite be. stories on that show was a guy that was printing the British pound. Flawless. Flawless. You couldn't tell. His British pound from that's the real British pound at that all. A complicated currency. Absolutely. You know what oh. he did? He what? sold seven. He's the only guy that I know of. There might be somebody else, but that's the only guy that I know of that he actually became a billionaire in real money. He sold seven billion dollars worth of British pound, and they gave him a billion dollars over. You know, they sold quite large quantities, but he sold all and throughout his career of printing counterfeit. He sold seven billion dollars worth of British pound, and he got a billion dollars worth of real pound. He was oh a, a bona fide billionaire from actually printing money, and that Whoa. story was also on that on that show. That was like another one that really stuck in my head. I'm like, these guys are brilliant. You know, if these guys put their energy towards something that's really useful, they that's would be always. you know CEOs of Fortune 100 companies. Yeah, that's what I've always said. You know? Why do these people that come up with these scams and these scams that are actually brilliant, why do they do something that's helpful? That will Actually, the money will follow them if they do something good. Absolutely. absolutely. It will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, if you have debt forgiveness, again, don't forget, if you want to be on the show, QFS1776 at Gmail. Also, don't forget uh, the Holy Grail, QFS76.com. It will teach you everything you need to know. 
If you watch the videos, top to bottom, they're the most elementary videos. We put them in a chronological order so the average person with average intelligence can understand what this is, what's coming, okay? And you'll get a good base. And then if you want to learn more, definitely go to our Telegram group. And if you need a large amount of XRP and you don't want to jump through all the hoops or go to Uphold and you can only buy $500 a day or $200 a day, you come see me. And it is, you know, it's flawless. I mean, you look... At the end of the day, every single one of my customers is completely spoiled because once they do it this way, you never want to go back the other way. Brother, I'm going to hold you over. We'll say goodbye to the audience. Don't forget, guys, we need you to sprinkle us out there. We need to override the algorithms. Thank you. Thank you, Mel.